I am still at the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. We're going to shoot another video. We're going to meet Dee, who lives in her car. And we're going to find out how and why and, uh, and just see what we can learn and share with others to help them in their journey into being a nomad and living their best possible life. So Dee, say hello. Hello. And uh, why don't we just begin with the idea of how did you end up living in your car? Um, I was transient most of my childhood and as an adult I lived the civilized life and everything. Um, I, in the last, uh, four years ago I got a divorce tried living on my own it was very hard it was almost impossible and I finally got to the point where I couldn't pay the bills um, I ended up going back to my ex-husband for five months a very volatile situation I can't continue living like that so here I am I've been watching Bob's videos on YouTube and it made me think I could do it and so on the first of this month I took off at first I prepared my car and um, I do have some income, not much. <laughs> do, you, do you mind if I ask how much income you have? I live on Social Security, a little over 800 a month. Right. And I have some bills, but not a lot. And um, so... Um, and that's nearly impossible to do in, in any traditional mm -hmm. home, apartment. Yeah. I mean, that's your whole apartment. Well, I couldn't buy food. Right. I couldn't even buy food. I had to get free food. And it was hard. I couldn't pay. There, I couldn't buy anything. Nothing. After I couldn't go. Rent. Couldn't go with a friend for a five-dollar McDonald's. Nothing. Right. And I got tired of that too. It was not a good life. No, it was not. And because you have been uh, a person who traveled and was transient, this appealed to you. I always loved camping. Out of my five, there were five of us kids, but out of the five, I think I loved the camping. I did it when I was raising my kids. Took them camping all the time. I love camping. So the lifestyle is wonderful. I love it. I love the freedom. I love the fresh air. I love the camarader camaraderie, I think you say it. Uh -huh. uh, meeting people. Um, finding other people that are just like me. You don't find that in the city. No. So Everyone's afraid of each other in the yeah, city. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so this was the car you had. Right. It's a Pontiac, 2005 Pontiac Grand Am. Uh, it's a, it's a six-cylinder and four-door. And I really did have to do some changing to make it work. Mm -hmm. So And so far, so it's only been a, a, a month, about right, a month. Right, about a month. And uh, you're, it's a little too early to know, but so far, so good? So far, so good. I'm, going, I'm, de I'm determined I can do it for a few years in this. I'd like to upgrade to a van and become a van camper, but <laughs> in the meantime, this is the way I have to live, and I'm not unhappy about it. Good, because you're a nature girl right. camper anyway. Right. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's take, how do you, the, let this car go past, and then a couple questions that I know everyone's going to ask when you live in a car. Uh, you support yourself with a uh, social security check? Yeah. And uh, how do you go to the bathroom? Well, it's hard in a car. It's so you have to really, you really have to work it out. Um, I have two things. I have a, a pee bucket, basically, which I do not line. And um, I do have a lid for it. And I've actually kind of so covered it with a soft lining because women don't like to sit on these hard plastic things. Right. And um, then I funnel it into a one-gallon... Oops, sorry, Dolly. <laughs> That's my dog, Dolly. Okay. Um, I funnel it into a one-gallon water jug. Mm -hmm. um, and then I dump it where it needs to be dumped. Um, for the other job, number two, <laughs> basically poop. <laughs> I we all have, do it. I have another bucket that is the same size that I sit into that bucket and I line it with a good plastic bag and I do my business and then I take the business and I twist it and I fold it over again and I twist it again and I fold it over again I do about four times and then I put it into a Ziploc bag so there's no smell right and I don't have to think about it after that I'm right. done right. And, um, That's exactly what I do. It's quick and it's convenient, and then I dump it when I get to somewhere where I can. Um, if it gets uncomfortably, like too much, then I'll go ahead and find a place to take it. Right. But 
but it really hasn't been a problem at all. Um, and the other thing I did when I set up my car for this is I made sure that I had a bench. Um, a lot of your vans can use five gallon buckets. If I use a five gallon bucket, you're going to see my rear end in the, in the window. Right. I have a two gallon bucket. Right. Which is perfect. And I put a board. I, well, I don't know if you want me to describe how I set this up. But, um, well, you took out, looks like you took I out took, your back seat. I took out the passenger seat and the back seat. And I built a wooden frame and I put a five inch memory foam mattress on there. I cut it down. I bought a twin size and I had to cut it all down. But it fits really nice and it's the full length and it only goes to the trunk. So I still have my whole trunk available. And then I built a wooden seat here. And I have a pillow up there that actually sits on this as a cushion. So this is, so you lounge right I, here. I can lounge there. I can sit my bucket on there. I can bathe. If I have to be in my car, I have a one burner butane stove that I can sit because that bench is very stable. I can sit this stove on there and I don't have a problem with the wind and I can cook. And I don't know if you've got the propane heater there. I see you have a Mr. Buddy. Yeah, and the only thing you have to do when you have a Mr. Buddy in a car is you have to make sure that you have about three inches of air ventilation. Now, that Mr. Buddy will burn me out. Right. Five minutes is all it takes to heat up my car. And I use Reflectix um, on my windows. I didn't really need the Velcro but I'm using it. But if you're gonna use Velcro, you need a stronger glue because the glue on back of Velcro is terrible. Right. Uh, so I just cut them to shape. One of the things that I did with my car, because it's going to be my living um, home, is that I, when I took my seats out, I took up the carpet and put Reflectix under the carpet so that the floor is not pulling up a lot of cold. Right, You got so you have Reflectix under. Right, underneath the rug. Right. And then one of the other things that I need to do, and I didn't do it, but I just put plastic between the bed and what have you in the trunk mm -hmm. to keep out some of the cold from the trunk. I will eventually put a board there that can also convert into a table because I will make screw on legs. The little basket over there in the corner, one of the hardest things to do is when you're going to the bathroom is to find the toilet paper in a car. Oh, yeah. So that's where I keep my wipes and my toilet paper hooked in a basket and bungeed to one of the little hooks up there. And what's the tarp for? And the tarp is just between the seat and the trunk. It should be a board, but right now it's a tarp. Right. So kind of uh, insulation? Yeah, to keep some of the cold from the trunk from coming into the car. And you just built, uh, you just made blocks. It's, um, I was uh, I legs. You from the other side. Yeah, we can see it from the other side. Okay. Um, well, taking out the passenger seat and the back seat really opened it up. It made so much room in here. I mean, that is um, almost 24 inches wide. So two feet. At, in the house that I was in, I had a 24 inch wide bed, believe it or not. That is pretty small. So, yeah. But what I have here is a memory foam mattress that I covered with a wool. I made this myself. I just took a, a wool blanket and sewed it over it. So nothing really sticks or, you know, sometimes the, the foam, you know, it kind of causes everything to not move. Right. So this moves and I just put a regular sheet on it and tuck it under. And then here's the board. I used two by twos and half inch plywood. And I'm not sure if I can do this, Bob, but this is interesting. Um, I don't do this often, but, oh, incidentally, you can use this for storage also, I mean, for putting things under the mattress. So I have lots of things under here. I have a flip-up, I have it actually hinged or coming up this way. All right. So that I can get in. So direct access. So the under room. there is my clothes. This is my dirty clothes and my medications because I take a few. Um, I just, there's a lot of cubbies you can stuff things right, in. Right, right. And in the front, you can see, um, under here I have a ton of stuff. I crochet. I have a toolbox up there on the front. 
I have a bag with crochet, yarn, needles and stuff. I have a sewing box here. I have all my propane bottles under there and a little bag with my dog's toys and jackets and what have you. And then on this part, actually that screen tent over there uh -huh. fits in there and my lantern with the case also fits in there. Wow. So it's just a ton of room under there to put things. Um, I don't have a bunch of electricity or electrical products. So um, I found a 5 watt solar kit. Doesn't have the battery pack or anything. So I just plug directly into it and charge my iPad and my cell phone. Right. Has both a lighter plug and a USB. Mm -hmm. I have a 150 watt power inverter that I plug into my cigarette lighter or this and I have electrical plug on that with the USB that I can use. I have two solar lights. One is the what's it called? The Lucy? The Lucy light which was fifteen dollars at Walmart mm -hmm. and it makes the inside that car so bright I couldn't believe it. I just got it yesterday. I have another light that I bought on Amazon for ten dollars. It's a three-way light. You can operate it strictly on solar, just charge it up every day in the sun, and you've got light for eight hours. Or I can plug it into USB to charge it. Or I can put batteries in it. So it's wonderful because it serves me no matter where I'm at, no matter what the weather right. conditions are. If it's rainy, you can put in batteries exactly. and so on. I have, um, because of the way I designed the inside of the car, I have tons of room. Oh yeah, look at that huge uh, trunk. trunk. The one thing that takes up a lot of space that I do have is my camping kitchen, but it does right. fold up to the size of this rectangle and about five inches deep. And because of my handicaps, I can't do a lot of squatting and bending. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to stand there and um, cook. So my screen tent was about forty dollars. I think I bought it about. 12 years ago. And this, what year is your Pontiac Grand Am? It's a 2005. 2005. Yeah. It's um, That's what you had. Yeah, it's it's what I had. And you probably get pretty good gas mileage out of it? I get between 25 and 28 miles to the gallon. That's, which is good. Which, I'm not going to get that in any other vehicle. No. So, if I have to move around a little bit, it's not costing me a fortune. Right. I spend no more gas traveling than I would in town going to the store every day and doing stuff like that. So. Right. Um, it's really good. Maintenance is a lot cheaper on a car than it is on a larger vehicle. Very much. And um, I just recently, last year, spent a little money putting on new wheels and rims. Mm -hmm. um, and did all a lot of work by myself, believe it or not. I'm 64 years old, but I've been disabled for the last four years. I worked for eight years and I was disabled five years before that in a wheelchair. So I worked my way out of all of that um, just by w hard work and determination. So, um, so a lot of what you want to do is because the car is tiny, but you're on public land for right, the most part, right. you're going to get outside and live outside. Right, and that's where the screen tent comes in. I'm thinking of getting a, t a, a dome tent with a screen tent on it, but this is going to do for a while. And what I've done is set up the screen tent right next to my car, and then in here I purchased this camp kitchen on Amazon for about $110, I think. Maybe not even that much. And it's great because it has your top for your stove. It does come with a windscreen, but it's short, so I add reflectors to make it a little higher. It has a great little cloth cupboard with a hard tray in the bottom so that it doesn't dip. Mm -hmm. This here is a fold-out, and it has a sink. And it has a dish rack. I, I can't. My kids can do cooler. Uh huh. And um, I have a water jug. A, a medium-sized cooler. It's a three-day cooler, which is wonderful because with block ice, it will actually last four or five days. Mm -hmm. And then this is a collapsible water jug, mm -hmm, I see that. which is great. I bought this with the sunshade. I don't really need the sunshade. I wish mm -hmm. I hadn't bought the sunshade one, right. but because it takes up a little more room. But everything is compact. My little table I've had for about 30 years. Uh -huh. And it's a little folding table. It right. just collapses like these chairs do. And my little tripod. When, now for storage. 
Um, for one thing, I keep a gallon water jug, and I keep it for grease or little bits of gray water that have a lot of food or something in it. You can strain gray water, get the food out of it, and then you don't feel so bad about when you have to dump water. Mm -hmm. um, I keep a thing here with three different sizes of Ziploc bags because they're good for everything. Mm -hmm. I save all my grocery bags. I use those for trash or for whatever, and when I run out, I still have other bags. I have three pots. That's all I carry. I have a little skillet with a folding handle. I have a small pot and a medium pot. This is not a huge pot. These are stainless steel, so they don't burn, they don't stick, and they're wonderful. They're wonderful. I do everything in them. That's my pots and pans. All my dishes are in this bag. I get collapsible things as much as possible. That's a collapsible bowl. And then the silicon, you saw that yesterday, the silicone strainer. I had another one too, which is a collapsible strainer. That's more of a steamer. And I'm, I'm, I don't have all collapsible yet. I made some things. I don't know if you saw the bag on the back of my seat, on yes, the driver's seat. I did. Yeah, okay. So that's got all those goodies. I like to, I'm a crafty person sometimes. And I made these bags out of towels that have slots. And I still have to put the straps on them so that I can hang them. And then I have easy access to all of my utensils. I have one for cooking utensils and one for my silverware. And I made those, just sewed some seams down them. And I do keep a cutting board because I don't want to cut on this. So by cooking out, you save a substantial amount of money and eat a little healthier. Right. And the windscreen keeps me from using quite as much fuel. Right. Um, all my food is stored in these bags. I got these at the dollar store or something, Dollar General, for $1.99 a piece. They're vinyl and they're zippered bags. Yeah. And so if they're empty, like plastic, I started out with nothing but plastic containers. Mm -hmm. They took up so much space. And so I said, I got to do something because I'm just too cramped. I bought these and they're, they're collapsible. So you can stick them in nooks and crannies if there's hardly anything in them. Right. And I separate my dry goods from my canned goods, and then the other one is for, like, taller bottles and things. Mm -hmm. And I have another one that I just have been putting water in, but, I mean, I could put other things in it. I think these would be great for clothing bags, too, because they're covered. And um, that's pretty much it. I do have a thermos because I don't want to have to keep reheating water. Right. And well, your experience as a camper has just really paid off for you. Yeah, it's helped me a lot because I'm not afraid of camping. And coming to your seminar has helped me not to be afraid of predators. Right. <laughs> okay, so um, this seminar, that uh, the RTR that um, you give every year, has an abundance of information for anybody who's trying to survive. Why don't you come on out in the sun? I don't sure. I'm sure anyone can see you. Okay. But um, I... I'm learning a lot of survival skills here. It's a great place to make connections with people. I've met some really nice people that we're going to connect along the, throughout the year, you know, and maybe meet up in different places. And so I'm, I'm just really happy to be here, and that's, that's about it, Bob. <laughs> Indeed, you just, it's amazing. I do want to introduce my little dog. This is Dolly, <laughs> and, she, in the shade and she is my best friend and companion, and she loves camping. <laughs> <laughs> She's keeping her eye on that camera. Yes, she is. <laughs> well, Dee, I think you've given a lot of hope to a lot of people who are a lot of women, and men too, are in your situation. And the fact that you took your seats out is amazing because it's a mm -hmm. huge amount of room in there. We have YouTube videos that tell you exactly how to do it on almost any car. Right. And there's YouTube videos on how to make your bed, too. So um, a little creativeness and a little, you know, take a little bit from what they give you and modify it to fit yourself. Right. I couldn't sleep on just an air mattress or those um, one-inch foam because of my health. Uh, because I have some really bad back and neck problems and fibromyalgia and a bunch of other things. But with that memory foam mattress, I sleep like a baby. And I don't even use a sleeping bag. I'm using a down comforter folded in half. 
and it's so warm, I never get cold in bed. Wow, that's great. Never. We've had some cool nights, too. So, yes, we have. Um, it gets cool in the car, right. but it doesn't get cool in my bed. Right. So. Well, I think you've given a lot of hope to a lot of people, that this is a good life, and they can do it. Yes, anybody can do it, if you want to or if you have to. You're at a head start because you're a camp, you like camping anyway, mm -hmm. but anyone can figure it out. Right. Well, Dee, thank you so much uh, for your sharing your experience with us and your hope, and uh, I'm really glad that, that uh, we can share this with so many other people. Thank you. And everyone, I thanks for watching this video, and I hope you liked it and learned something, and, uh, and uh, like us on YouTube and subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.